In the summer of 1989, I was completely blown away by Tim Burton's Batman. I had no idea that this one movie was going to impact my life so much, but boy did it. I immediately went to the town mall, walked in Walton Books, and picked up my first comic book, Detective Comics issue 609. In it, Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle were telling a great story. I had no idea what had happened before it or after it, but I knew I was all in. For Christmas that year, I received the greatest Joker stories ever told trade, they were soon to be called graphic novels, and later gave a buddy $5 for the greatest Batman stories ever told. I absolutely loved these stories, going back to the 1940s adventures of Batman and Robin, origins of the Joker, Two-Face, and Catwoman, seeing Dick Grayson grow up, go to college, Silver St. Cloud figuring out Bruce Wayne was Batman, the plot line of Hugo Strange and Rupert Thorne, I could go on and on. Meanwhile, in real time, I was collecting the new books where Batman had taken on a new Robin, Jason Todd, and then that Robin was lost at the hands of the Joker. Between the drugs, assaults, abuse, murders, all of the crime Batman dealt with in Gotham, and now this horrific tragedy, it was obvious, as DC put it on the covers, these books weren't just for kids. I was never confused about what was going on, never lost. I jumped right into the superhero soap opera in Detective 609 and went digging where I wanted to dig and kept going forward with the books. I kept on reading, buying up issue after issue of Batman and Detective and every now and then a Superman comic or Shadow of the Bat, then Nightfall, where I have to admit DC really got me. I bought every issue of Nightfall, including issues of Robin, Catwoman, and Legends of the Dark Knight, where Batman was defeated by newcomer Bane, and Jean-Paul Valley took over as a meaner, cruder Batman. I even purchased all of the Night Quest issues and Night's End, where Bruce Wayne came back to Gotham and became Batman again. Believe me, I mowed a lot of lawns and used a lot of my allowance to keep up. My mom bought a few too. This is when comics were only a dollar. Times have changed. Unfortunately, something tragic happened after the Nightfall Saga. Zero Hour. Where only a few short years after DC had reset their universe with Crisis on Infinite Earths, they once again threw a reset at us comic fans. I was a little flustered. Not again. Since then, DC and Marvel have done this quite a few times, Resetting and rebooting characters and letting writers run wild without asking them to have any knowledge of the characters or backstories for whom they are writing. To me, that's just wrong. You, as a comic book company, are asking me to read this book month after month and follow the lives of these characters. You are asking of so many of us out here who have stuck with you yet you are willing to throw all of us out every five years hoping to catch 100 new readers because you think that it is too difficult for them to catch up. I am telling my story for you to know that it is not too difficult to catch up. If you have a character that catches a kid's imagination like Batman did mine back in 1989, they will put in the time and catch up. I promise. They will follow Dick Grayson leaving the Batcave to go to college and become Nightwing, Sarah Essen returning to Gotham and rekindling her romance with Commissioner Gordon, Batman have a complete emotional crisis issue after issue over the loss of a child who was clearly not ready to be Robin, Tim Drake losing his mother and then making hard choice after choice to lie to his dad so he can be Robin. They will follow these things because they care about the characters. But you lose us, us the readers, when every time you bring on a new writer that seem to have no regard for what came before and you don't hold them to it because they just really wanted to write a Batman story. I once read an article where Grant Morrison had told Scott Snyder that every Batman writer had to kill his Batman. I'm not sure where he got that idea, but he couldn't be more wrong. Batman continues. He goes on. He keeps fighting. That's what Batman does. Killing heroes is boring and lame. It takes the hope away from the hopeful. If your best idea as a writer is to kill Batman, 
then you need to try to write another draft. Reboots and restarts are old and tired. Create new characters and let the characters we all know grow, learn, and adapt. That's why 70s and 80s comics are still talked about, because that's what the characters were doing, not constantly resetting.